I want to give a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Therapy isn't something to run away from, it's a vessel to run towards. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online, so break out your comfies. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time. Any time. And schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. No more fumbling to get a session on the calendar. You schedule based on when the time is right for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. Therapy changed my life for the better. Pun intended. And with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash rocky. That's better h e l p dot com slash rocky. Sync reunited to present the best pop video to Taylor Swift, and they looked good. Not only did they reunite to give her the award, they announced that they now have a new song debuting on the 29th. Let me tell you something about me and NSYNC. I'm a big fan. Did you ever see those videos of girls screaming and crying when they saw the Beatles for the first time? Or any time? That was me at my first NSYNC concert. Pure hysteria. I had the marionettes. My walls were lined with posters from top to bottom. When the No Strings Attached CD came out, I sat in my living room with the pamphlet out. That pamphlet had all the lyrics. That used to be a thing, lyrics inside CD pamphlets. And I sat in that living room, and I didn't go to bed until I had every single lyric memorized. Every lyric. I'm not going to sit here and demand your respect, but Lisa Left Eye Lopez did a whole rap verse in Space Cowboy, so it wasn't a cakewalk to get these lyrics down. In 2014, I met Joey Fatone while waitressing at Guy Fieri's restaurant. He came in, and Guy, this is true, Guy gave us a quick intro, and I started weeping in front of him at 25 years old. He said to me, working hard or hardly working, to which I replied, <sighs> I love you so much. (laughs) Then, as he exited through our dishwashing area, saying goodnight to everybody, while I'm bussing dirty dishes, I scream back, bye Joey, thanks for making all my childhood dreams come true. Do I wish that wasn't a true story? Yeah, part of me does, but it is, all right? And he was only my third favorite. I've always been an advocate for more Joey Fatone solos. There's not nearly enough. Now the murmurs, the memes, the reels, the TikToks, the tweets, the rumor mill is rumbling. Will in sync reunite. One TikToker speculated that there's a new venue opening up in Las Vegas and that the venue liked a post about in sync having a reunion. And this sparked chatter that maybe, just maybe, they'd do a residency in Las Vegas. So why am I saying all this? What's the point? The point is, someone has to fight for millennials. Someone has to fight for us to be able to attend whatever reunion show that they do. Whether you guys are doing a tour or whatever residency, whatever the reunion might be, I need you to listen. Make these tickets affordable. Millennials have endured so much. We were told we had to stop ordering avocado toast. Stop getting guac at Chipotle. Don't even look at an avocado, because you're going to need that money to put aside for a house you can't afford one day. Do you know how many brunches separated to use the dated term, the men from the boys, when you had to decide between avocado or a future mortgage? Do you know how many lines were held up at Chipotle? Contemplating our futures. 
because guac was extra. Do you know how many millennials put avocados inside their reusable bags without scanning them? Millennials were doing that for the economy. Now, a majority of us will never look at avocados the same because of the trauma we endured throughout our 20s and 30s. Thanks, Obama. In-sync ticket prices need to be affordable for millennials because of a recent occurrence. A double occurrence, really. The Eras Tour and the Renaissance Tour. And you might be saying to yourself, Rocky, you didn't attend either of those tours. Yet... That doesn't mean I can't be a voice to the voiceless. Those millennials that had to get a second job, sell an egg, start an OnlyFans to afford one or both of those tours. Hey, and that's our prerogative, the Britney Spears version. Those millennials are allowed to spoil themselves, goddammit. Plus, they didn't know an NSYNC reunion was right around the corner. How could any of us have had that much hope in 2023? Grow up. My financial advisor and I had a long conversation in my bathroom mirror and she advised me that attending either one of those concerts would have drastically decreased my chances of survival as the palms of my debtors need to be greased. But I support every single millennial who did what they had to do to be a part of those cultural unforgettable phenomenons. And because of that, they deserve to be at the in-sync reunion that they can afford. All millennials deserve to be at the instinct reunion we can afford. Some of you might be saying, Rocky, why don't you sell your instinct marionettes if you want some fast concert cash? Well, I can't. My dad took them out of the box and he arranged them in my childhood bedroom that has somehow intertwined all their strings. They went from no strings attached to absolutely completely the fuck attached. They're valueless. Plus, if they were still in the box, they'd be worth forty-seven fifty. In sync, we come to you with our hats in our hands, saying, We are ready mentally. Some of us are ready physically. We are deserving. We are finally emotionally mature enough to handle the lyrics to Gone. So please, go easy on us fiscally. Thank you. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello! Did you have a good week? I sure hope so. I make little notes for myself throughout the week. Otherwise, there would be no Wild Nights podcast, baby, because I would forget everything. I would forget all the juicy details and the fascinating moments of my life. But there is one detail that I don't think I'll ever forget. It's what they call a core memory. The other night I was staying at a house that uh, was not my house. And I fell asleep on a couch that uh, was not my couch. And I woke up to what felt like someone staring at me and a subtle crunching. When I opened my eyes, I saw no person but the cat that lived in the home that was not mine. That cat was staring at me with all her might while she crunched down on cat food. Did she just want a buddy to be awake while she ate? Was she trying to let me know whose house this was? I don't know. But in all the years I've been alive, this is the first time I can say a cat woke me up by staring at me while it crunched on its food. And I hope that's the last time I ever say that sentence. I wished, I wished in that moment I could just communicate with her. Say, what's up, babe? You good? I get hungry in the middle of the night, too. I just finished Taco Bell. Is this retaliation for me crunching my nachos at you? What's up? And maybe she would respond back. Hey, babes, no worries. I didn't mean to wake you. I just really get a craving for the crunchy stuff at 2.30 in the morning. And plus, I didn't want to eat alone, girl. But we can't talk to animals. We're not Dr. fucking Doolittle. The other night on the subway, I hear a tiny voice saying tiny little words. And I thought, it's a tiny bit late for a child to be talking like a parrot on the subway. And I started to look around because the little shit wouldn't shut the fuck up. I had to see where it was coming from. And it wasn't a child. It was, in fact, a loose parrot on the subway. I know it's the New York City subway. If you're a New Yorker listening to this, you're thinking to yourself, I'm being dramatic. Why are you even bringing this up? I'm bringing it up because as many years as I've been taking the subway, it's hard to surprise me. 
and seeing a parrot sitting across from me at two o'clock in the morning, that really surprised me. Parrots got the whole talking thing down, the whole repeating you thing down. But has anyone ever had a back and forth conversation with the parrot where the parrot wasn't being a yes man or a yes parrot? This thing was loose. I'm not saying put a parrot in a cage. I'm just saying this was a really trained parrot that was having a really late night and all it could do was repeat its owner. Get me a bird that'll go back and forth with me, huh? I've been going back and forth with whether or not we know too much about celebrities' personal lives or not enough. Look, it's not that I think we shouldn't know the bad stuff. We should. We must. There's a lot of harmful people in power out there and they should be exposed. The way women keep each other in the loop about what men are creepy, I don't think it's a terrible thing to know what celebrities are assholes. Maybe I'm being naive here, but how could Drew Barrymore not know she was scabbing? How could she not know she was scabbing? And how, if she knew she was scabbing, could she do it anyway? I'm not trying to be in this girl's wallet, but she got money, honey. That's Josie Grossy. That's forgetful Lucy. That's riding in cars with boys. She got money. So maybe I'm being naive, but I think there is a way more to that story about her going to work. This woman has managed to dodge scandal after scandal her whole life. You're telling me a gal who partied at Studio 54 when she was 11 is a scab? Maybe she is. I have no fucking clue. I just feel like maybe there's something we don't know. How can it be true, Drew? How could you scab? Speaking of people and how could they do things, the other morning, before 8 a.m., while I was still sound asleep in my bed with about 50 minutes left to go, I got four different text messages from four different people about four different things. Guys, everybody. If you text me before 8 a.m., you're muted for life. Muted for life. Listen, maybe that's harsh. I don't care. I'm not Kris Jenner. I'm not making Kris Jenner money. Until I'm making Kris Jenner money, we gotta get on a Rocky Powell timeline. Muted for life. I know I've been talking about this a lot lately. You know I am excited about one thing and one thing only on TV right now, and that is Big Brother. Oh my god, this season is so good. A lot of people are saying it's not good. But I think the fact that they're even talking about it, they know it's good. But because Big Brother's on, I don't know, day 50 or something, things are getting really tense. And I'm becoming really invested. And then I start picturing how I would handle the fights in the house. So then I find myself walking around the block an extra lap just so I can figure out how I'm going to end this imaginary Big Brother fight in my head. And I gotta say, working out all these fake fights in my head, I think it's really sharpening my negotiation skills. The campaign to get me on Big Brother is still standing. Let's make it happen because I'm trying to go into hiding for money while America watches. I think that's a good deal for everyone. It's hard to go into hiding though. A couple days ago, I was out on Long Island. I was walking myself to the Long Island Railroad. I'm cutting through the parking lot, trying to make my way to the train, and an older man approaches me. Now, he had to be between 75 and 80, no bigger than 5'1", 5'2", had a baseball cap on, but all this white hair sticking out the side. He had those sunglasses on that are kind of orange because they're also a prescription. And he sounded like a little Joe Pesci-ish. And he said to me, Well, hello there, beautiful. How are you doing today? And I said, I'm doing really well, thank you. And I kept it moving because I'm not trying to end up in the back of a van if this guy is bait. Hi and bye. You look very lovely today. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Then I walk into the train station. I'm staring up at the thing that tells you what track your train's going to be on. The train thing that tells you what track your train's going to be on. You know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, like a little elf on the shelf... This guy pops up behind me. Now, why this is weird besides the fact that he popped up behind me is it's weird because he popped up behind me, but he had been walking the other direction when he saw me outside. That means my man did a loop-de-loop. Really startled me. Perhaps put a bell on, my dear. And he said to me, you going home? This is not information I'm going to divulge to a stranger because it is not a stranger's business where I'm going. So I said, 
I'm leaving here. A reminder to everyone, your business is not anyone else's business. Sometimes it takes us a long time in life to realize that. No is a complete sentence. And sometimes people dodge your question because they don't want to answer your question, but they also don't want to be rude. So let's pick up on both of those things, shall we, everybody? It's called poor conditioning, and we can unlearn it together. And learn it for the first time. Back to our little friend. Are you headed home? I'm leaving here, yeah. So there's no chance I can interest you in grabbing a drink with me this afternoon? My name is Jojo. No, no, Jojo. I have to be on my way, but thank you so much. I'm very flattered. All right. And then he just kind of scuttled off. I shared this conversation with someone, and his response to me was, well, back in his day, that's probably how he picked women up, which is a great point. Though I wasn't interested in having Jojo inside of me, or skin to skin in any capacity for that matter, I did really like his approach. He was bold, he was confident, he was interested in what I was doing. All these are fabulous qualities. Be bold, go after what you want, don't beat around the bush. The moral of the story is be more like Jojo. Jojo the bold. I could avoid situations like this if I had a car, I bet. I did have a car. It broke down 10 years ago, and it's just been on my to-do list to get another one ever since, so I'm going to get right on that. In the meantime, I'll just have embarrassing moments in the street as I exist. I walked out of the house the other day confident. I had a good outfit on, smelled good. The sun was setting, but I was still wearing my sunglasses. I was ready to power walk to the subway like I had just closed a deal. I pop out of the building. I see a guy on the street. I take out my phone. I open it. I had a headphone in my right ear, a headphone in my left. I go to put on my music so I could strut to the train, but my Bluetooth wasn't connected the way I thought it was, and um, the guy that I saw when I walked outside and I made eye contact, through my sunglasses, of course, and I pressed play on my music. My Bluetooth wasn't attached, so all this guy saw was me stop, stare at him, press my music. It was Justin Timberlake's sexy back, blasting out of my phone. I would say embarrassment isn't an emotion I feel too, too often. I'm not exempt from it, but I don't feel it super often, and I was embarrassed. And there must have been something in the water that day, because later on that night, I was out at a bar with my friend Will. Shout out to my friend Will, who was just in town. He is so much fun, and it was so good to see him. And a bunch of us were out at a bar for Will. Will and I walk inside. He went to grab a drink, and I was going to go use the bathroom. And I put my hand on someone's back. And I shouted in his ear, hey, I'm going to go put some mascara on. There are way more people that we know here than I expected. Will turns around, except it wasn't Will. It was a guy who gave me the worst look ever. I think it was because I wasn't wearing mascara. That brings us to Rocky's highest thoughts, my most stoned thoughts of the week. Number one, funner is way more fun than saying more fun. Number two, wouldn't it be great if there were just little pockets all around town where you could pop in and dance to a song once in a while? Maybe there would be a few other people dancing while you wait for the subway or you wait at the post office, whatever you're waiting for. There should be more dance bubbles. Sometimes you want to find love in a hopeless place, but you don't want to do it by yourself. Number three, it's recently been brought to my attention that Sasquatch is not of this planet, but an interdimensional traveling being, which is why he can't be caught. And Earth is the portal in which Sasquatch travels through to get to the next dimension. Essentially saying that Earth is where Sasquatch dreams, and because of that, that's why he can't be caught or captured. To the person who sparked that thought and told me that, thank you. And number four, it's good we had Cisco when we had him. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me at Wild Nights with Rocky on TikTok and Instagram, at Wild Nights Pod on Twitter. If you want to watch all episodes with your eyes on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can support the show for two or five dollars a month by joining my Patreon. A big thank you and a future thank you to everyone who's written and everyone who will write a review when this episode is over. It really does make a difference. At the end of this week, I am headed to Farm Aid, baby. That's right. My yearly pilgrimage to Farm Aid continues in 2023. 
I cannot wait to come back with stories for you. So please tune into next week's episode. Can't wait for next week. Be sure to go back and catch up on some episodes you may have missed. And if you had a really good time with me, share me with a friend. Thanks for tuning into Wild Nights. We'll see each other next week. In the meantime, stay wild. Is it?